straight to the league, I ain't waiting for my knee to blow. Yesterday I was needing this dough. Get it? I was needing this dough. Hello, everyone. Top of the morning to everyone. <laughs> Simone, thank yes. you for being here on Needing Dough. To have an athlete like yourself who was named the most dominant <laughs> athlete in the whole world last year. Did you have to get comfortable with everybody knowing you? Like, yes. everywhere you go, everyone knows who you are. You could probably walk around and not many people know you. One day, everybody knows mm -hmm. you. And coming up for pictures and what's that been like to like yes. take this meteoric rise to now everyone knows you everywhere you go. What is that like? It's kind of surreal that everybody knows who I am. Um, but I feel like it only gets hard if I'm in a rush somewhere. Like in the store, exactly. and I, mean, I usually don't wear makeup, and my hair is like in a knot a lot of the time, and I'm just like going to the grocery store. It took a lot of time to get used to it, but it's pretty normal now. As a youngster growing up, you obviously went through the adoption process and foster care. I and was, what did it teach you? I only remember a couple of things from it. Um, but, you know, I think the most important thing is family. So I'm very thankful that I had a good process through it all. A lot of people don't even know that I was adopted till I told some of my teammates, and they were like, no way. Um, so it's just, it's kind of normal for me. Exactly. It's what I thought everybody was adopted, to be honest. <laughs> That's what I seriously thought. I and know so that whenever feeling. I said I was adopted, they said, no way. I said, well, where did you come from? <laughs> because I thought everybody was adopted. That's hilarious. And was being named the most dominant athlete, was that like, That was oh very goodness. shocking. Was that the highest of the high for you? Or was it winning one of the medals? Probably the Olympics, because I had waited my whole entire life for that moment, and nothing compares to when you get that medal and you stand up and then you hear your country's anthem. Nothing can compare. Nothing compares to yeah. that moment, right? Now, after the Olympics, you actually decided to take a year off, right? Yes. Why did you decide that? How did you come to that decision? Yes. I thought it would be better for me mentally and physically and it would give me time to work with my sponsors so that I wouldn't have to focus on training and doing some of the events that I was doing and to kind of be a normal teenager. Did you talk to your sponsors before and tell them you were gonna do this and they were fine with you taking a year off and not yes, competing? Yes, because then they got more time with me. <laughs> so it was great for them. And did you actually take a break? Did you like not go to the gym? I never went to the gym. For 365 days, you did not go to the gym? Yeah, sometimes I would go and jump on the trampoline, but that made me tired, so I left. <laughs> now, when you got back into the routine, when you went back to working out yes. and training, was it hard to get your mind clicked back into, okay, now I'm back training? It was hard in the beginning just because I lost a little bit of muscle. Oh, so it's yeah. like I had to do spots and I just felt bad in a way in the beginning because I'm like, wow, I've never had to have spots or needed help. Was the mental part of like, oh, now I need a spot? And like, were you overthinking things and wondering yes, about things? Yes, in the beginning, since everything was muscle memory, I never really had to think about a lot of the skills that I had to do. And I had a little bit of mental blocks coming back because it's, I usually just let go and let my body do whatever. And then I was like, well, I'm flipping twice and twisting twice. Like, I could really hurt myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's is this, what I exactly. think. Exactly. It's the thing we all think watching all yes. gym is like, whoa, that looks like you could really get hurt. Yes. So I started to overthink a lot. Um, so then it's just kind of like you close your eyes and you pray. And you let go. Mm -hmm. Did you ever doubt yourself when you were getting back in there? Like, will I ever be able to get back to what I used to do? Since I ended on such a high note, I didn't think it was possible. And I was a little bit nervous because once you do come back to the sport and you take some time off, you're not as good as when you left. And you know, I ended on the Olympics, such a great note. Of course, note. you ended on the highest of the highest. Exactly, I walked out with five medals. So I was a little skeptical about that, but then it, I surprised myself because I came back even better. Got it. And obviously, so your coach is kind of your person that you lean on when you're competing, Dang. when you're training. Mm -hmm. But then when you're not competing and training and making business decisions, who's the person that you lean on the most or the people? My super agent, Janie. Nice. She's, the she's a super agent? She is. She's a super agent. She's not just an agent. She's a super <laughs> agent. And um, we always talk to her, my parents and financial advisor, to her about making all my business decisions. What do you think to this point is the best business decisions you've made? I'm very picky with who I work with because it has to be meaningful to me and it has to fit my life. So I'm very picky with that, but I feel like working with a financial team is probably the best decision. What's the best advice that you've gotten about saving money? Mm -hmm. This is kind of strange, 
but it's to actually spend more money. <laughs> really? Yes. Who told you this? My financial advisor. Really? To make, at least put them in good investments. Oh, so not just spend. So crazy that's not money. spending, that's yes. investing. To and was that wisely. hard to get your mind around investing? Like actually putting money into something? Um, I'm still getting used to it. My boyfriend always tells me, pay more attention in those <laughs> meetings. Because I walk out of it and he says, so how was it? And I say, oh, I just ask him if I'm broke or not. <laughs> and he said, that's not a good idea. He said, you really need to listen. And I'm like, I'm trying, but it's just zoom, zoom, zoom. I just get so lost. Yeah, and that's kind of the point of yes. the show is as an athlete, all athletes make money and a lot of money yeah. at such a young age. It's such hard. Age. So they might as well be speaking a language that you it's never It's a different heard. language to me, completely. Like if I started speaking gymnastics to you, you would have no idea. Zero idea. So that's like when people speak money to me. I'm like, just tell me if I'm broke or not. But do you ever ask them, hey, can you slow down and explain this to me? Yes, And tell me time. what the definition of this means. Yes. And then we have a little book that we'll flip through. She'll look at me and she's like, okay, Simone, this is what we're talking about. Okay. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now because to me it sounds like a different language. I heard you talk about one time when you got your first check, you were still I an did. amateur. How old were you when you got the first? I was probably 12 years old or 13 years old, and it's this huge check. And uh, my coach said, whatever you do, don't touch it because that will forfeit your eligibility for college gymnastics. And then my coach came over and she said, no, you're just not allowed to cash it. But you can touch you it. You can touch it. <laughs> and I thought touching it would forfeit everything, so I refused and I jumped off the podium and I didn't let it touch me at all. I like that. You yes. follow instructions I well. I did. I follow you instructions You follow instructions very well. And you want to do what's yes, right. I get exactly. it. And, but how old were you when you first were able to literally touch the check? So the other day, actually, maybe two weeks ago, I um, wrote my first check. What were you buying? It was for a down payment for my house. <laughs> nice, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Did you enjoy this process? Oh, I loved it, I'm obsessed. Really? I couldn't even go to sleep last night because I'm so excited. Now, you know, homes are a good investment. You could buy yes, a home. Yes, that's, that's what she told me. You do it in the right place, the right time, yes. the right home, that's, that is exactly. a good investment. It is. And then before the Olympics, you talked about your dad giving you a credit card. Yes. And what was that like, were you just, Spending, swiping, getting what no, you want? Or how did you I, deal with that? I have a fear of going broke. And does this fear, is this every day you wake up like, I don't want to be broke feeling? Yes, sometimes I go on days to see if I can't spend any money and then of course my gas light comes on so I have to go get gas. And so I never really swiped the card. Maybe once in a while I would go get Subway, but other than that, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't swipe it. And then you have my sister on the other hand. Swipe, 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 let's go get food, let's go get the nails. <laughs> Obviously, you're widely respected as an athlete, but do you feel like you have a responsibility to speak mm -hmm. up for people who don't have the platform you do? Since we have very big social media followings and platforms, um, they listen to us and it's something that they can relate to. So I'm always up to do it as long as it's in a positive manner. Of course. Um, so I'm very, I pick and choose my battles. Um, but as long as I'm standing for what, standing up for what I believe in, then I know it's okay. Tell us about your approach. You obviously look like you have a blast. Mm -hmm. What is your approach to using social? So for me, my approach to social media is for them to get an inside glimpse of our lives because a lot of them don't think I'm real. I heard a lot of them say I'm a robot and I'm not real. <laughs> of course. So well, I, because your, your yes. sport is all about sticking the perfect move exactly. with the perfect landing. I understand how people can feel that way. I'll wake up and my hair is crazy and I'll still put out a Snapchat so they see I'm normal. Like, I don't wake up pretty every day. I need some work, too. <laughs> yeah. Get it in gear yes, like the no rest of us. there are no secrets. There's no secrets. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and besides Louis Vuitton bags, you have another guilty pleasure, something or like an Ew. everyday thing to like. I was shopping for towels. And those for your new are, house. Yes, those things are expensive. But you know, I got them on sale. And you're going to learn a um, house sucks money all oh, the time. Oh, I know. There's always something it needs. It's yes. never finished. Then yes. something breaks. Then you fix that. But if something. you have a housewarming party, then you can get gifts. That's true. That is very <laughs> true. And is it hard to splurge on yourself knowing that you love to save and you're always worried about going broke? I will only splurge if I earned it. Oh, so you only reward yourself after yes. championships or Olympics or something yes, like that? Yes, something big, and I know that I've earned it. And do you usually know, like, going into championships, yes. do you have in your mind, like, 
okay, I gotta win because if I win, I'm getting this no. thing. No, I never think about own? winning, but I always think that if I do good, maybe I can reward myself. So you know I have to follow this now. So after the next Olympics, I gotta know, after you do great, you're gonna do fantastic. What you, re I'm, I'm gonna be more uh, interested in what you reward yourself with than when you stick the bowels one or two. I wanna know what you get yes. after the Olympics. I That's already what I'm have an idea. What is it? Tell uh, us, can you tell us? I can tell you, it's what a G-Wagon. Oh, nice. What color? Matte black. Matte black and what color interior? Red. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yes. Well, everyone, let's give Simone Biles a big round of applause. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank, Thank you so you. much.